Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with ThomasHenson.com and today we're going to have another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's episode, we're going to focus on some examples of the Kappa architecture. And so stay tuned to find out more. So today's question comes in from a user on YouTube, uh, Yasso1977. They've asked, is it possible to build a prediction model based on real-time processing data frameworks such as the Kappa architecture? And so I think this user is stemming this question from their defense for either their master's degree or their PhD. So first off, Yasso1977, congratulations on standing on your defense and creating a research project around this. I'm going to answer this question as best I could and put myself in your situation where if I were starting out and had to come up with a research project to be able to stand for my either my master's or my PhD, what would I do and what are some of the things that I would look at? And so I'm going to base most of these around the Kappa architecture because that is the future, right, of streaming analytics and IoT and it's kind of where we're starting to see the industry trend. And so some of those examples that we're going to be looking for are not just going to be out there just yet, right? We're still, we still have a lot of applications and a lot of users that are on the Lambda, and Kappa's is still a little bit more on the cutting edge. So there are three main areas that I would look for to find those examples, and those are going to, the first one is going to be um, in IoT. So your newer IoT, so the Internet of Things workflows, you're going to start to see that. And so the, one of the reasons that we're going to see that is because there's millions and millions of these devices that are out there. And so you can think of any device, you know, whether it be from a manufacturer, that has sensors on manufacturing equipment, smart cars, uh, even smartphones, and just information from multiple millions of users that are all streaming back in and doing some kind of prediction modeling, doing some kind of analytics on that data as it comes in. And so on those newer workflows, you're probably gonna start to see the Kappa architecture being implemented in there. So I would focus first off looking at IoT uh, workflows. Second, this is a tried and true one that we've seen um, all throughout big data since we've started implementing Hadoop, but uh, fraud detection, uh, specifically with credit cards and some of the other some of the other pieces. So you know, look at that from a security perspective. And so a lot of security. I mean, we just had the Equifax uh, data breach and some of the other ones. So I would for sure look at um, some of the fraud detection around you know maybe some of the major credit card companies and see kind of what they're doing and what they have published around it because. Just like in our IoT example, we're talking millions and millions, maybe even billions of users all having you know, multiple transactions going on at one time. All that data needs to be processed and needs to be logged. And you know, a non, you know, we're looking for fraud detection. That needs to be pretty quick, right? Because you need to be able to capture that in the moment that you know, whether you're inserting your chip card or whether you're swiping your card, you need to know that that's about to happen, right? So it has to be done pretty quickly. And so it's definitely a streaming architecture. My bet is there's some people out there that are already using that Kappa architecture. And then another one is going to be anomaly detection. I'm going to break that into two different ones. So anomaly detection, when we talk about security from the insider threats. So think of, you know, being able to capture, you know, you know, insider threats in your organization that are maybe trying to leak data or trying to give access to people that don't need, don't need to have it. Those are still things that happen in real time. And, you know, the faster that you can make that decision, the faster you can predict that somebody's an insider threat or that they're doing something malicious on your network, the quicker and the less damage that is going to be done to your environment. And then also anomaly detection from manufacturers. So we're talking about a little bit about IoT, but also looking at manufacturers. So there's a great example. And I would say that, you know, for your research, one of the books that you would want to want to look into is the introduction to the uh, Apache Flink. There's an example in there from a manufacturer of Ericsson who've implemented the Kappa architecture. And what they have is, I think it's like 10 to 100 terabytes of data that they're processing at one time. And they're looking for anomaly detection in, in that workflow to see, you know, are there, are there sensors, are there certain things that are happening that are out of the norm so that maybe they can stop, you know, a manufacturing def defect or predict something that's gonna go wrong within their manufacturing area. And then also, you know, externally, you know, from when the users have uh, their devices and be able to predict those too. So those are the three areas that I would check. Definitely check out the uh, introduction to Apache Flink. A lot of talk about the uh, Kappa architecture. Use that as um, some of your resources and be able to uh, you know pull out some of those examples. But remember, those three, those three areas that I would really key on and look at are IoT, 
fraud detection. So look at some, maybe some of the credit card companies or other fraud detections. And then also anomaly detection, whether it be insider threats or manufacturers. So that's the end of uh, today's episode for Big Data, Big Questions. I want to thank everyone for watching. And before you leave, make sure that you subscribe. So you never want to miss an episode. You never want to miss any of my big data tips. So make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time. Thank you.